support me on Patreon so I can keep my lights on. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk, and I do not accept the responsibility. Also, join the Discord. We have a lot of sophisticated conversations. Are you on drugs or alcohol? No, sir. Do you take drugs or alcohol? What is drugs? A drug can be defined as a chemical substance of known structure other than a nutrient or an essential dietary ingredient, which, when administered to a living organism, produces a biological effect. Many festival goers decide to use drugs when they go to them, though most of the festival users don't actually use drug reagent kits. These kits can detect certain drugs, and they can give you information if a drug is suspicious. Many places like Dance Safe will sell these reagent kits so you can actually test what they are. Many popular festivals are the Boom Festival in Portugal and the Ozara Festival in Hungary. These are just two of the big psych trance festivals, and a lot of them have drug testing, which are harm reduction services. Today, we'll be making some of the reagents that they actually use to identify some of the main drugs that are used. Weed, molly, LSD, and mushrooms are some of the main drugs that we see used at festivals. A lot of people just buy drugs, and then they just use them without actually testing them. This has caused many people to die, and I think it's really important that if you are going to use drugs, that you test your drugs out, just to make sure that there's nothing bad in them, or anything suspicious. I want to give a huge shout out to John over at Synthetica Chemical. He helped me acquire all of these reagents, and I'm not even sponsored by him, but I really want to say that he is really helpful, and I can't thank him enough. The reagents made today will be the Mecca, Marquise, Simon, and Irelic reagent. Some of the reagents used in these drug testing reagents are pretty exotic, and they can be kind of hard to get. And that's where John came in. We are going to start with the Marquise reagent today, and it's pretty simple to make. To a small beaker, we're going to add 10 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. We're then going to add 37% formaldehyde to the solution, and we're going to add about 0.5 milliliters. Normally, it's 40% formaldehyde, however, 37% works just as fine. And we're just going to make sure to stir everything around and make sure everything is mixed together. And that's essentially it for the Marquise reagent. I decided to put all of the testing reagents into amber glass dropper vials just for ease of use, and it just makes it a lot easier when we actually test compounds. And I accidentally got the child lock ones, and it's really annoying to get on and off. Next, we're going to make the Irelic reagent. This one is a pretty popular one, as it's used to test many psychedelics. We're going to add 5 milliliters of 95% ethanol into the beaker. We're then going to add 5 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. This really doesn't need to be added in slowly, and it can just be poured in. We're going to make sure this is fully mixed and stirred before we add our next reagent. Now we're going to add 0.15 grams of P-dimethylaminobenzaldehyde. This did take some time to dissolve, however, it did dissolve over time. Overall, I think it took about 3 minutes to dissolve everything, and it was ready to be put into the amber glass dropper vials. Even though this was quite simple to make, it is one of my favorite testing reagents just because it tests quite interesting substances like psychedelics and indoles. And as before, we're going to put the annoying cap back on. We are going to make the Mecca reagent now, and we do need selenous acid for this. This can be made from selenium dioxide, and it's quite easy to make. To the beaker, we're going to add 0.1 grams of selenium dioxide. The addition of water to the selenium dioxide will create the selenous acid, and we really just want to make sure that we don't use a large amount of water and just a minimal amount to dissolve everything. This will take some time to dissolve as before, and we're just going to swirl everything around until it's fully dissolved. I did end up adding a little bit more water into the beaker just because the selenium dioxide really wasn't dissolving that well, and adding the addition didn't make it all dissolve. As you can see, it's fully dissolved, and we have our selenous acid in solution. All we need to do now is add 10 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. I accidentally added too fast, and the solution started to boil. So I decided to add it a lot slower, and eventually I got it all in the beaker. After it was all added, I made sure to stir everything and make sure everything was mixed together fully. Once everything had been mixed, same exact thing, I put everything into the eyeglass dropper, and I put the cap on. Apparently the child lock capabilities of the cap is also adult proof. These caps do not come off easy. Now, to make the next one, which is Simon's reagent, we actually need acetaldehyde. 
To do this, we're going to first add 50 milliliters of water to the round bottom boiling flask. We're essentially just going to do a chromic acid partway oxidation from ethanol to ethanol, which is the acetaldehyde. Next, we're going to add 15 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. I also washed the funnel I was using with a little bit of water. Next, we're going to add 18 grams of potassium dichromate to the beaker. I had to be careful not to breathe any of the dust in or get it onto myself as this is pretty carcinogenic and I really don't want cancer. 50 milliliters of water was added to the beaker to dissolve as much of the potassium dichromate as we can. This will not dissolve all of it and you will need to use a little bit more water to get it into a reaction flask. I also washed the plastic cup that I was using to transfer the potassium dichromate. Everything was stirred to my best ability, and I stirred for quite some time, however, again, not all of it dissolved. When I poured the potassium dichromate solution into the reaction flask, you can see that not all of it dissolved, and it stuck to the sides of the flask. I used a little bit of water to wash the sides of the flask, and the rest of the beaker that some of the potassium dichromate was sticking to. I don't have it on camera, but I did put a stir bar in and I let it did stir for quite some time just to see how much we could actually dissolve. When it dissolved as much as it could, we set it for a simple distillation. Though the distillation will not be using a hot plate or a heating mantle, it will actually use a blowtorch to heat the solution up. The receiving flask was also put into an ice bath. 25 milliliters of ethanol was also put into a pressure equalizing addition funnel and it was going to be slowly dripped into solution. When I first start dripping in the ethanol, not much happens. However, when we start hitting it with a blowtorch, you can see that it slowly starts to change color of the reaction mixture. This reaction mixture does have a huge problem with bumping and you need to be really careful with how much you heat it and that's why we're using a blowtorch because we can control the heating. What's happening is chromium-6 is being reduced to chromium-3 and acetaldehyde is being produced. Since acetaldehyde really doesn't have a high boiling point, not a lot of heat needs to be used, and it also reduces the insane amount of bumping that you'll see happen to me later. After some time, you can really see how dark the solution gets, and the slow boil that we have going on. I had to make sure not to heat it up any more than this, just because it would really boil, and a lot of it would go into the receiving flask. The trick that I found out is you hold the blowtorch to it for about 10 seconds, moving it around, and then you take it off for some time. As the reaction goes, you can see the acetaldehyde going into the receiving flask. I aimed for about a drop every second, however at times there was a drop every 5 seconds, and that was when it was getting closer to the end of the reaction. As the reaction was getting closer to the end, you can see that the entire reaction mixture has really changed colors. Unfortunately, I went too hot with the blowtorch and I had a huge bump that pushed a lot of it into my receiving flask. Before I did the entire reaction again, I decided to make the sodium nitroprusside solution that we need for the reagent. 0.2 grams of sodium nitroprusside was dissolved in 10 milliliters of distilled water. These also took a little time to dissolve and once it was eventually dissolved, we have this beautiful ruby red oranges solution. We just needed a little bit of the acetaldehyde, and I just did the reaction a little bit just to get enough. We only need about 0.2535 milliliters, and that's what we're going to add into the solution. Essentially, it's just 2% sodium nitroprusside and 2% acetaldehyde solution. This is part A of the Simon reagent, and part B is just a 2% solution of sodium carbonate. Though, I don't show that one on camera, just because it's really easy to make. And with this, this finishes all of the reagents that we'll be making today. Now to neutralize your reaction mixture, all you're going to do is add a saturated solution of sodium thiosulfate. This then will be put into a separate container and it will be properly disposed to a chemical waste center. After some time, it goes pretty opaque and we have a precipitate and a bright blue solution. Now let's go test out some non-suspicious compounds. Starting with the Marquise reagent, you can see that there's multiple different colors for each different substance. From amphetamines and substituted amphetamines like MDMA or MDA, to natural alkaloids like mescaline, morphine, codeine, 
to bath salts like methylone and butylone, Marcus Reagia is known to reliably react with these compounds to produce a specific reaction for each. Since the Marquis reagent reacts with so many, it's also a good idea to cross-test with different reagents just to make sure that you have what you have. Though this won't tell you exactly what you have, more of what you don't have. Here's a proposed explanation, and you can see the adduct, which would be orange for methamphetamine. I put many different compounds onto the testing plate, and you can see that we have a mystery compound, an ADHD prescription that I have, acetaminophen, and some sugar. You can see that some of them react immediately and some that don't. Initially, I was very shocked at the ADHD medication not reacting. However, it is enclosed in some sort of binder and I had to let it run for a little bit to see if it actually worked. You can see that there's actually still no reaction with the ADHD medication and I really decided to crush it up and then re-put some more back in. Upon the addition of the crushed ADHD medication, we can see that we have a reaction pretty fast. Let's say someone said that they're going to give you ADHD medication and you don't get a reaction with the Marquise, then maybe you really didn't get it and now you know what you don't have. That's why it's so important to cross-reference the drug test reagents to see what you don't have and to make sure that you're actually pretty safe when you're going to ingest them. Obviously, sending this to a lab for testing is a better idea, but this is a good step in the right direction. I changed backgrounds and I let it run a little bit longer. You can see that they're pretty much fully reacted and we got a color change for every single one of them. And this is where you would go back to the chart and reference the color to the compound. Now we're off to the Ehrlich reagent. You can see that it has pretty much the same reaction for the different compounds. The Ehrlich test mainly tests for indoles and urobilinogen. Mainly indoles are tested because psychedelics contain the indoles, well at least a fair amount of them. And a lot of other things contain indoles as well, like melatonin, tryptophan, and 5-HTP. Likely if you don't see the reaction that you're looking for, it's pretty much not going to be the psychedelic or indole that you want. You can see with the addition of the Ehrlich reagent that we pretty much have an immediate reaction. It turns into a pinkish slash purple color, and the only one that really didn't react was the acetaminophen. This is primarily because acetaminophen doesn't have an indole in it. So if someone told you it was a psychedelic, and it tested, and you don't see the color, then likely it's not the psychedelic or the indole containing. It's extremely interesting the difference in color and how dark it is depending on what the indole is. This again is where you would reference the charts and do cross drug testing to see what you have or what you don't have. Now off to the Mecca reagent. This is primarily used to test for opioids. This is especially important when you are ingesting drugs because most people don't want to ingest an opioid. This is a very good one to cross reference with other drug testing reagents. I couldn't find too much of a mechanism or exactly what happens, so we're just going to go based off the reference chart and some cool colors that we can get from it. You can see that some of the compounds, when reacting with the Mecca reagent, that they react pretty much instantly, and some that actually don't. We can see that the indole containing compound reacts, the mystery alkaloid, and the sugar does react, you just can't really see it on camera though the ADHD medication did not react. Though this makes sense just because the chart says it won't react with this type of medication. Really to have the best chance possible is to cross-reference with as many drug testing reagents that you have available. Your life is much more valuable than spending a couple more dollars just to get some drug testing reagents. Simon's reagent is also very useful as it reacts with secondary amines and many different alkaloids to produce different colors. Primarily, the secondary amines are a blue indication. When exposed to an amine, reaction with acetaldehyde produces the enamine, which subsequently reacts with the sodium nitroprusside to the imine. Finally, the iminium salt is hydrolyzed to the bright blue Simon A complex. Now, Simon's reagent has part A and part B. Part A is added first, and part B is a 2% solution of sodium carbonate. We should expect a blue color for the secondary amine, 
and not really a reaction for the ADHD medication. Now, the interesting thing about the guaifenesin, or however you pronounce it, it was supposed to have a reaction of a pinkish to blackish color. However, it really never did that, and I'm not really sure why. Though the secondary amine alkaloid had a brilliant blue, and it confirms that we have a secondary amine. The ADHD medication does not have a secondary amine, and this is why it doesn't work. What's incredibly interesting is if you swap out the acetaldehyde with acetone, that can then do the primary amine test, and you can see if you have that or not. This will then give a purple color indication, and it's pretty interesting. I just want to thank every single one of you for watching, and I really appreciate when you guys subscribe and like the video. I also want to mention if you are going to use drugs, I really advocate for safe use and responsible use, so please make sure you're using your drug testing reagents. And really the best way is to get it tested at a lab facility so you know what you're actually taking. As always, huge thanks to all my Patreons, you guys mean a lot to me, and thank you so much for supporting the channel.